Hello everyone, Crystal Bridger here, and today I'm here to talk Spyro Music. Specifically, Spyro Music being copyright claimed by AWOL. So, in case you don't know, Spyro's soundtrack, it's a soundtrack called Spyro by Stuart Copeland, popped up on Spotify after, uh, and a couple, a couple other streaming services. Um, after a bit of a delay, this has been in the works apparently for a long time. And I think people were excited about it, you know, being able to have officially distributed Spyro music um, you know, in high quality stereo mixes, etc, etc. People were excited. I was excited. Um, not from the perspective of, you know, we're getting these, these new big stereo mixes and, and stuff like that, but more from the perspective of, you know, people for some reason, uh, you know, gravitate to these, you know, these official streaming services to listen to music, even though they're already available, like, anywhere when you look. But I guess the stereo component of it was you know, pretty exciting. Now, the story goes is that the soundtracks are uploaded. Um, 49 tracks, I believe it was. Notable omissions, um, particularly stuff from Spyro 3. And the reason why um, you know, some of the guys from Copeland, the, the musical artist, uh, speculated that it could be to do with clearing things from Ryan Beveridge, who worked on the Spyro 3. But you know, to cut a long story short, not all the tracks were uploaded. And then shortly thereafter, um, videos started getting copyright struck. Now, I'll show you some screenshots here. I have you know, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of Spyro videos um, with the Spyro music and they have all been copyright striked, or slowly one by one being copyright striked. Now, I also uploaded the soundtracks, just purely uploaded the soundtracks years ago, uh, like literally I think over 10 years ago now, and I totally understand why they would be copyright striked, or copyright warning, I guess it's not really a strike where you actually get your channel taken down, but more so a strike where uh, you know, the, he claims the, the rights to it and, and gets the, the revenue, all of the revenue. You know, not even a revenue share, he gets all the revenue. And that is totally fair enough because I thought I'd qualify that because I think some people may think, oh, he's just angry that, you know, his, his soundtracks are getting taken down. No, absolutely not. He, Copeland deserves every cent of that. What I don't believe he deserves every cent of is gameplay footage and even gameplay footage with commentary, especially speedrun footage as well. Um, you know, walkthroughs, so there's something going on outside, it's a bit loud. The problem with this is that AWOL, which are the distributor of this, they um, are actually through other work in, in my real life, I've actually uh, know people very, very close to me that have worked with AWOL before as a distributor. AWOL have a, you know, an immense you know, copywriting system that picks up, you know, where, what tracks are being used, you know, where, you know, for, for radio play and et cetera, et cetera, like that. What people don't understand is that what has happened here is specifically by design. It is not a mistake. It happens because they want to make as much money as possible from their client and they would be receiving um, a portion of that revenue as well. So that's what I wanted to talk about is that the problem is not specifically Stuart Copeland, it's not Copeland himself, but it's the fact that Copeland went through AWOL to get, uh, I guess, you know, get these, these tracks uploaded, get them claimed, and then now, YouTube can't really tell the difference between whether it's just a pure upload, like a soundtrack upload that I did a decade ago, and commentary or transformational content, you know, where I'm not actually, the, the music is really only just there as, a, as in the background, incidentally as part of the game. Now, a similar thing happened to me when uh, I did a Super Mario Sunshine stream. Uh, like many years ago, did the stream again. Don't ex really expect to make much money from it. It's just sort of a thing. And then the next day, it got you know it got copyright. You know, it, it, I think I don't think it was muted, but it was like you know you you lose all your Lizzie revenue, no split because you but the intro movie or whatever. You know, and this is one of those things where it's like typically Japanese companies, uh, Japanese publishers are very strict with copyright. The thing is, is that this isn't really as well. I think people, some people have said this is an accident thing. It's not, it's not Activision, it, it's completely AWOL. Um, and I know it sounds like, it sounds like I've gone AWOL, but it's completely AWOL, the, the distributor. Um, so I guess this is a, you know, a bit of a, a video where it's, I'm sort of saying that at the end of the day, there's probably almost nothing that we can do about this other than kick up a storm, other than complain. The problem is, is that it's going to require so many manual reclaims by us. Like, I think I could, probably go in and claim everything back and be like, okay. But the thing is, they're just gonna look, the thing is, YouTube is just gonna look at the hard data, go, you're using this soundtrack, too bad. 
So I guess the question is, is that what do we do now? This changes how Spyro content videos are being are going to be made because at the end of the day now we can't use it. You know there are games from you know even more popular games where you can use their soundtracks absolutely fine. People will say you know this is this is how it is. You know you get the sort of the, the copyright defenders if you will that that's back for the multi multi billion dollar corporation that'll go you know this is too bad and you know what? and effectively yeah it is too bad. There's really not much that can be done. But I still think it's absolutely fair to put in these complaints, complain about it, talk about it, talk about why it's bad, um, and kind of go, well, what next for Spyro? You know, this is, it's, people want to tie this into Activision. And I'm no, I'm no defender of, of, of them as like, in terms of copyrights and stuff like that, fan games, you know, I'm always, I'm pro that, right? I'm pro that. But you have to recognize that this is, this is not really anything to do with um, you know, Spyro 4 or, or, or them, I would I would wager that they would not be receiving a cent from this because Copeland is the one that went through AWOL. Um, AWOL is also owned, is owned by Sony, I think it's like a subsidiary. So, you know, it's a whole chain of, it's a whole chain of events. That's actually interesting is that if AWOL is owned by Sony and, you know, Sony was the original, you know, involved in, you know, the original Spyro games, it is an interesting question where it trickles down. But I would, I'm just going to say, just my prediction, Activision would not be making any money from this. The weird thing though about this soundtrack is as well is that one of the tracks was from Reignited, someone said. I, I read that and I actually haven't, I haven't, I've listened to half the tracks, like the ones with like some of the new mixes, which are really cool by the way. But I haven't seen, I, I heard that one of them is actually a, a I think it was like, is it Crystal Glacier maybe? It was a, it was a Spyro uh, Reignited mix. So the, the, it's just, it's, it's baffling. Um, what's going on here with this soundtrack and, and the things that are missing and you know, maybe they got to clear samples and stuff like that But as my friend Laura said, Luma Laura, this was not worth it at the end of the day um, Being able to listen to it in a slightly high quality uh, to me To then have all this all this content go down the drain and now people not be able to use such an amazing soundtrack At least for the immediate future is to me a massive massive shame and I you know, in, the, the, in terms of the future of me covering Spyro, I'm thankful that you know, YouTube is not my full-time job, but it is a supplementary income, uh, you know, three figures a month, I guess. So something like that, you know, can sometimes do better, but yeah, basically, you know, a couple hundred, three, four hundred bucks a month, 200 depends on how it goes, depends on how the month goes, just full disclosure, that's how much I earn from YouTube. Now that's gonna just be cut probably most over, over in half, and now as well that I'm gonna to have to be cognizant of the fact that I can't use most Swire tracks, so it means like for LPs and stuff like that. Funnily enough, for, for Reignite it should be fine, um, but for uh, the original games, I'm gonna to have to dub it over with Japanese, you know, game soundtrack, not even Japanese game soundtracks, but I wanna use like obscure VGM, maybe use it as an opportunity to pump up some other weird game soundtracks that are like, you know, really the sort of unknown. Uh, there's some great channels, uh, El Famous, so Demon, Demon, I think, that does, uh, you know, like obscure BGM mixes, Alpha, uh, another guy that does great stuff. So maybe promote some other game soundtracks. I think that'd be cool, but this sucks. At the end of the day, this sucks. This is, this is you know, this is terrible for creators. It's terrible for for people that have poured their, their heart and soul into Spyro gameplay and content and stuff like that for years you know like at the end of the day like to see every few minutes getting an email going oh yeah your double jump guy has been demonetized you think it's like what well, you know it's it's bullshit it's it's but it is it is the game i uh, you know i'm sort of almost a walking contradiction that i'm saying it's bullshit but it's fair within the realm of what they're doing they technically have that claim the problem is is that we i think as creators and just an audience think that that claim is ridiculous and shouldn't be uh, so easily cleared. One last thing as well, the whole copyright ID thing is inherently flawed. And I know that um, Canadian Data is a similar thing. It's inherently flawed because I can literally claim other people's footage from like Spyro stuff because it's the same footage technically, like from opening cutscenes and, cr and Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel content, like he mentioned. And that in and of itself is just proof that there's a system in here and the system doesn't recognize games a lot of the time because if you think about it, it's like if the game is the same footage or the same cutscene, why do I own it? I should not have any claim to it just because I uploaded it first. So 
with that, I will leave you. I hope you guys all have a good day. And I'll be back. I'll be back. Spyro's content is not stopping. I'm not going to be doing a boycott because at the end of the day, um, I'll just be covering it without the music now, I guess, which is just weird to say. But until this is sorted, I, do I see it being sorted? Probably not. For a while, at least. But I want to be wrong about that. But I don't want to be right about it. It's not. Yeah, it's not about being right. It's about what I, you know, what I think the most likely answer is. Anyway, that was a lot of rambling. On it. No, no jump cuts there. No, uh, no, no YouTube cutting where you do every second is a new thing. But thank you guys for watching. See you later.